Well, it looks like Sniper Wolf finally acknowledged her wrongdoing and apologized after more than a week of every single YouTuber and their fans berating her and begging YouTube to take any form of disciplinary action at all. But of course, Sniper Wolf's apology had to be as disingenuous as possible, and YouTube's punishment had to be as lenient as possible. Her apology wasn't even on her main channel. She didn't even have the decency to at least make a half-assed, insincere YouTuber apology video. Instead, the best she could could do was an AI generated damage control tweet made by her publicist where she couldn't even spell Jax Film's name right. I really do feel like the Jax Film was a good touch here because I feel like if she was obsessed with him enough to drive across state lines for hours at nighttime to his house just to talk to him then I feel like she definitely knows how to spell his name correctly. Even though it seems subtle it makes the entire apology seem that much more insincere, and I'm sure she was doing it intentionally to be passive-aggressive. Or maybe her PR team is just full of a bunch of Indians or Turkish people that don't know how to spell correctly. Either one. She didn't even put in the effort to place her own fingers on the keyboard to write a tweet. She had to have someone else do that for her. So I roasted her and said it was chat GDP, and then I got contacted um, from someone on her team that they actually wrote that as a team. And in retrospect, she wouldn't even be touching a keyboard when she used to make gameplay videos back in the day either, so it makes sense. Anyways, this apology dropped exactly 41 minutes after Team YouTube formally addressed the incident and announced that they're punishing Sniper Wolf with a temporary suspension of her monetization. Not even so much as a warning or a community guideline strike, just a slap on the wrist. And this hasn't really had any detrimental effect on her business since she's just re-uploading her main channel content back onto her monetized second channel anyways, which is effectively ban evading. YouTube doesn't even try to hide the fact that she's a member of the protected class of creators that seems like they could just get away with anything and never face any real adverse form of punishment. And the fact that these tweets were released not even an hour away from each other indicates that there were obvious behind the scenes negotiations between Sniper Wolf's management and YouTube. If any other plebeian, non-female, non-marginalized, non-protected creator even so much as mentioned that they're going to pull a stunt like Sniper Wolf did, they'd be permanently terminated without any warnings or strikes, just like they did to Frank Hassel when he showed up to Boogie's house. No other creator could have possibly gotten away with something like this other than the YouTube aristocrat royalty who are treated like they're in a different class of citizen than us and where the law of the platform simply doesn't apply to them. This exclusive privilege really became apparent to me after I saw that YouTube blamed the Jax films as a belligerent as well after they said that both sides are at fault and exhibiting problematic behavior. Which is basically equating driving to someone's house and doxing them to millions of people with having a catalog of videos on your YouTube channel that criticizes and makes fun of someone else's bad content. I'm pretty certain the reason they're trying to assign culpability to Jack's films here is because he's technically in violation of TOS by releasing consecutive videos targeting another creator. Even if they're just constructive criticism or not mean spirited in any way, it's still classified as bullying and harassment by YouTube standards. This is exactly what they got Leafy for as I mentioned in my last video. In fact, Keemstar mentions the same exact point in a Twitter space and claims that it was a rule they had in their TOS only temporarily while Leafy was still active, but they later removed it. But it does kind of look bad when you look at someone's catalog of videos Slimey and it's always Sniper Wolf Sniper, you know, it's always about some other YouTuber. Isn't that how they got Leafy? Jack Films uh, might be uh, breaking that that harassment uh, term that was temporarily in the rules and somehow it got removed where you can't make multiple videos on one single First creator. Off, like it, it appeared in the TOS or like an updated TOS and then it got removed, but it was there like a couple years ago. And I think that's pretty much the consensus the truth is, on why Leaky if, if his name. But if that were the case and the rule no longer applies, then what is YouTube blaming Jax Films for exactly? Clearly he had to have done something wrong by TOS standards if YouTube is condemning his behavior as well. I think if this rule is still active and YouTube acknowledges that Jax Films is at fault for violating this rule, then it's strange to me how YouTube hasn't punished him yet considering that his offense of this rule is far worse than Leafy's. He straight up has a second channel solely dedicated to satirizing her content with over 60 videos on it, while Leafy only had a handful of these kinds of videos. I think this is either an inconsistency on YouTube's end where their officials can't even keep track of their own TOS, or, similar to Sniper Wolf, 
Jax Films is also a protected creator in a way. I know for a fact that if any other plebeian YouTuber made a series of 64 videos criticizing another large female creator, they would get the firing squad treatment. In fact, they wouldn't even make it to 64 videos, let alone a handful of videos like Leafy. Another inconsistency that I noticed with YouTube officials concerning their enforcement of TOS is their stance on off-platform behavior. You have YouTube officials clearly stating that off-platform behavior will go unpunished and that it isn't applicable to their policy. But if you read their current TOS, it says verbatim that they will take action against off-platform behavior. Again, it's obvious that YouTube officials don't even understand what their own rules are and and it's clear that the rules themselves are never enforced consistently. And it's flexible to those YouTube officials who express leniency or stringency to certain creators whenever it's convenient. It looks a lot like the rule that Jax Films is violating was written suddenly and arbitrarily in the past just so YouTube could have justification for terminating Leafy. And I wouldn't be surprised if this other rule about off-platform behavior was written in a similar way. Maybe this rule wasn't applicable or simply didn't exist in the past, and YouTube just added it into their TOS only to placate the angry mobs that wanted action against certain creators. This seems to be the case since coincidentally around the same time that Leafy was causing trouble back in 2020, YouTube actually amended their TOS to include penalty of offsite behavior just so they could suspend the Nelk channel because they attended a politically incorrect rally in LA. YouTube tried their absolute best to completely neglect punishing Sniper Wolf or to even address the existence of her incident for over a week. This is either because the rule wasn't active at that particular point in time, or, the more likely case, it did apply post-Sniper Wolf incident, but they just bent the rules to protect her because they thought they could get away with it. Just last month, YouTube suspended Russell Brand for accusations that occurred off the website, so I'm pretty certain this rule was still in place, and YouTube only enforced it on Sniper Wolf, although very lightly, just so they could satiate the community's demand for justice against her. I think YouTube's plan was to wait for drama amnesia to take over and for the community to forget about this scandal like they do every other time. But because the drama was still sizzling and people were still making a fuss about it for over a week, YouTube had to take some form of action for optics sake. Even though it was just a slap on the wrist and a lot of people were dissatisfied with the punishment at the moment, YouTube believed it'd be enough to pacify the online buzz about her given enough time had passed. Which already looks to be the case because nobody is talking about this stupid drama anymore. I do understand why Sniper Wolf should be punished for what she did from an ethical standpoint. But my attitude about community guidelines policy has always been pro-YouTube leniency. Since every time there has been an ethical concern on the platform that the community and publications call on YouTube to take action towards, they always manage to make the website worse for everyone after they implement whatever measure they thought would work best to resolve it. I can't help but remember Matt Watson and his campaign that led to YouTube ruining the livelihood of countless creators, all because of ethical concern among the community community and journalist. Or the dreaded adpocalypse which only occurred because of ethical concern amongst the community and journalist, and it's made the experience for everyone on the website worse ever since. It's unfortunate, but you can't rely on YouTube to correctly handle issues like this or improve their website in any way without them ruining everything. I promise you that if YouTube took the Jurassic action that the community wanted them to with things like TOS and off-platform behavior, they would all end up regretting it and it'd just be one of the many ways that the website has become worse. Lastly, I've noticed that people were saying they were worried that this sets a dangerous precedent for creators, since it shows them they'll only receive a slap on the wrist for psychotic behavior as long as it's off the platform. But this is just extremely naive. Sniper Wolf didn't get a slap on the wrist because YouTube is lenient towards doxing. She got a slap on the wrist because YouTube is lenient towards Sniper Wolf. No one else could get away with the things that protected creators like her get away with all the time. Anyways, I know I'm late to the drama, as always, but if you're still here, make sure to like and subscribe and join the Discord. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Why? Because she doxed some loser? It is different because she's a hot girl. Yeah. His reaction is the most bitch-like thing ever. Who the f*** is Jax Films? Some This guy is the most- what, This is the lowest testosterone, biggest ever. Of course he's sponsored by BetterHelp. If you've been thinking about, you know, doing it, you need to call BetterHelp. They helped me out big time. I really needed their help. I need better help. I need better help. Look at this 
face. This guy is a psychopath. I would allege, I would hear alleged that he's a P. Do you remember Swirly Face? He concealed concealed his identity by using the Photoshop swirl filter on his face, and the police just unswirled it. This looks like this guy. Years on YouTube. I never In my whole six, this is such this is such behavior. This is such weak, effeminate. Listen to the language he's using. I've been on YouTube for sixteen years. I've never once been treated this badly. Cyberwolf needs to be deplatformed in this exact moment. This guy's a bitch, man. I point out cases of content theft and freebooting. I've been being a snitch. No, I didn't do exactly what you said. I've just been being an annoying snitch. This guy is the worst.